You're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plot TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. And on this day in history, the 14th of September 2015, what happened was that a Muslim teenager was arrested, and that's for carrying a clock that actually looked like a bomb. I mean, according to the teachers, they say that this looked like a bomb, and that's why they arrested him um, in that school. Um, so his, his name actually is Ahmed Mohammed. He was a freshman at the time. He was questioned by the police. He was detained. He was led in handcuffs to a juvenile detention center. And he was suspended from school for three days for what authorities called a hoax bomb. But it was actually a homemade clock. I mean, it was a clock that he assembled, uh, put together by himself. And Mohammed's arrest actually set up a storm on social media. You know, as what, what many saw this as an example of racial profiling, as, you know, Islamophobia. And he became known as the clock boy. Uh, you know, the hashtag known as um, I stand with Mohammed appeared on social media. Mohammed's family filed a lawsuit against, you know, the school district. Uh, but of course, that was thrown out. And that teenager did not return to school and his family returned to Qatar soon after um, the arrest. And that's what really happened um, today in history. This young man um, arrested, 14 years old young man. He was a Sudanese American high school um, goer. Oh, I, I understand the racial discrimination perspective here and you know why uh, the hashtag also came up and you know why that you know, you know was even considered but you also can't blame the American you know criminal justice system and you know security um, system because of uh, the PTSD that has risen from you know 2001 you know it's unfair no doubt but at the same time, you know, you know, there's always going to be little pockets here and there of uh, things like that. I listened to a podcast yesterday of the um, racial, you know, discrimination that happened in the years. Even, you know, 2015 is even far, you know, from 2001 to about 2005, 2006, there was huge racial discrimination in the United States against Arabs, you know, who were um, Americans who had, yeah. you know, no terrorist links or anything. But as long as you were Arab... Um, there was a lot of that that was going on. Pretty much the same thing that started happening after... So, uh, Americans sometimes just disappoint you. But pretty much the same thing happened after uh, COVID-19 started. You know, there was you know, some attacks on, on Asians in the United yes. States um, for a while. You know, you know, and mostly some people would say, well, be, because of uh, former President Donald Trump's um, um, narrative and his speeches and some of all of that. But um, it, it, it's both ways. Yes... You know, it could be racial profiling. At the same time, there's certain things that just are kind of like red flags. You don't just go carrying a clock, you know, up and down. Um, seeing the times that we currently are living in. You don't um, just go carrying a clock? Yeah, I mean... Oof. You made a clock and took it to school. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, you know. But when you... Because of the little red They should have done their there. due diligence and investigated yes. before subjecting him to such inhumane treatment. So that's where, that's where they got it wrong, you know. So if you look at a clock and you ask him what that is, and it says, oh, just a clock I made at home, that's where it should have ended. You know, you probably, you know, x-ray the clock or put it through a scanner and see there's nothing. You let him go on his way. You know, the fact that he had to be suspended from, from school for three days, before the fact that he had to be handcuffed, that was completely unnecessary. And that's where, you know, it is, you can point out that there, yeah, definitely is racial profiling, especially in 2015. This is 14 years after 9-11. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I can't defend any of them um, um, in, in this way. Um, I'm also guessing that if it was a white kid who brought that clock, nobody would have raised any eyebrows. I mean, that, that was also part of the conversations that came Sadly. up. That the reaction to white kid invest, inventors were very different. Of yeah. course, they're praised, celebrated. They invite them on you know, big TV shows to talk about the invention. But it's a white kid here, and, or it's a black kid a Muslim kid, uh, it seems to be a different narrative. It's, it's pretty sad. You know, I, I think from 9-11, the, the events from 9-11 have been really, really sad. You know, um, 2,977 lives were lost on September 11, 2001. Close to 1.5 million lives were lost in the war in Afghanistan and, and in Iraq. And 1.5 million people that weren't necessarily terrorists. Um, but Anyway, let's still in the United States. Uh, we're moving to 1901. We're moving back now to 1901 to talk about the 25th president of the United States. His name is uh, President William McKinley. He died on this day after being shot, you know, a couple of days earlier uh, by an anarchist. And this event eventually led to um, a huge decision, you know, over who should, really should protect a United States president. 
Um, his deputy then, Theodore Roosevelt, took over from him. And there were, you know, some, you know, court cases. There were, you know, a lot of debates over whether the Secret Service should continue because uh, President McKinley at that time wasn't necessarily moving around with any protection. He loved to walk around the streets and meet people and have, you know, handshakes here and there. But after, you know, his death uh, or his assassination by an anarchist, um, there then w were huge debates over who should protect the United States president. Um, they you know, arguing either between the Secret Service or the United States uh, Army. But eventually, you know, the courts gave a ruling that it should be the um, Secret Service. He died on the 14th of September of gangrene, which were caused by the wounds because one of the bullets couldn't be taken out of him. He was shot twice in the stomach and one of the bullets, uh, you know, was left inside of him by the doctors. They couldn't find it. Um, because, of course, it's 1901, there weren't necessarily x-rays back then. So, you know, that's what eventually led to his death. Um, the person who shot him, I can't pronounce his name, I think is Cos Goz, had lost his job during the economic panic of uh, 1893 and eventually turned to um, an anarchist. Um, and, of course, uh, had huge issues with leadership in the United States and across the world and supported uh, prior assass assassinations of, um, of, of pre previous American presidents and took it upon himself to assassinate William McKinley. He had tried to meet with him twice or tried to assassinate him twice in the past but didn't get close enough until this, um, you know, this uh, particular event. Um, so, yeah, um, McKinley died on this day. He was shot a couple of days earlier. And Theodore Roosevelt eventually took over as United States president. Mm, sad one. He actually shot on the 6th of September, 20, um, I was about to say 2021, mm. 1901, and sadly died um, September the 14th. Um, too bad what happened in this day in history. Yeah. All right. 1901 and 2015, uh, on both in the United States. Now, let's take a short break. When we come back, we're moving to our first major discussion for today. Um, our Off the Press guest has already started, you know, that conversation, and that is the jailbreaking Kogi State. What exactly happened? Who, you know, is uh, currently at risk? And what is the Kogi State government and the Ministry of Interior needing to do to ensure that those um, um, prisoners are found and brought back to prison? We'll be back.